Hello, everybody. It's me, Jeff. Hope you're doing well. I haven't been on Twitch Live in a long time. And I was like, we're getting ready for Summer Game Fest. I probably should come on here and chat with you guys. Uh, so I had to update the graphics to this year. And um, hope you're all doing well, by the way. Uh, happy Memorial Day if uh, you're here in the U.S. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to stop by and chat a little bit with you guys about all things Summer Game Fest. So it's been a while here. I got to maybe, let's see if I can put up my little Summer Game Fest logo or something here. Sorry, I'm playing with OBS. It's been, it's been a minute. Um, then I get the featured chat going. So anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Um, and uh, yeah, we're hoping to have a good Summer Game Fest coming up. It's going to be a big week. We've got the PlayStation State of Play coming up. Um, on Thursday, and then uh, we got our big live show on Thursday, June the 9th. Um, so anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Um, we're going to chat a little bit about Summer Game Fest and what we're doing. Um, hope all is good. Uh, but yeah, we're going to reveal this week. Uh, we'll be revealing a lot of the partners. People have been waiting to hear who's working with us on Summer Game Fest. That will all be revealed this week. Um, we've got some sizzle trailers, some hype trailers, some game news, some special guests we're going to be announcing this week, which I think will be exciting. Um, and it all leads up to our live show. It'll stream right here on Twitch on Thursday, June 9th. So not this Thursday, but next Thursday. Uh, and we also uh, will have a really cool Twitch drop as well. So uh, we'll tell you about that this week as well, but we'll have our Twitch drop coming. So lots of news this week. And if you're a video game fan, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff happening, I think, as well. Um, yes, we have our show on the 9th, but I think there are going to be some cool games showing stuff uh, this week as well. Um, so get ready. It's going to be like a fun week for video games. The PlayStation State of Play, I'm very excited about on Thursday, so we'll be watching that together. Then we've got uh, my show next Thursday, and then obviously the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase on Sunday the 12th. So this week and next week are going to be very good, I think, if you're um, fans of video games, which I know all of you are if you're watching this channel and getting ready. Um, so yeah, we're working on our show. Uh, it's going to be a fully live show. I'll be uh, in a studio like last year. We'll have guests with me. I know there are a lot of pre-recorded events that people still do. Um, I'm a big believer in the big live show and the energy of that. So we're going to be in rehearsals. I'm actually starting uh, tomorrow. I'll be in quarantine because um, I have to be extra careful to not get COVID um, in order to be able to do the show. Uh, in person, so there's still a lot of rules and restrictions. We're a SAG after show, which is the uh, actors union uh, uh, out here uh, in Los Angeles, so I have to be extra careful. So I'll probably be streaming a little bit more on Twitch because I'll be uh, here inside. But we've got a great show for you. It's going to be a two-hour showcase of, of games with some announcements, hopefully some surprises if things hold, um, and some real in-depth looks at gameplay and gameplay sequences as well. So I'm very excited about everything that's come together um, for the show, and there's lots still to do. Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to chat with you guys for a little bit. Uh, I thought maybe I'll take some questions. I'm going to try and get that um, feature chat thing going if I can figure out how to do that again. It's been a minute, as I said, so I may not fully have everything uh, ready to roll. But um, let's see if feature chat works here, and I'll answer some questions. Um, oh, my God. I'm trying to remember how I do this. Uh, my dashboard. Okay. Yeah, here we go, I think. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, let's see if I can make this work. Let's see. Um, okay, so if I display this, will it display? Oh, there you go. Wow, it works. I know how to do this still. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so if you guys have questions, drop them in chat, and I'll try and answer some of them. First question, why PlayStation so quiet every year since they leave E3? Um, I don't know if they've been quiet. I think they're just taking a, the, a different approach. Um, you know, they've been doing state of plays. They've uh, they, the future of gaming event. I think PlayStation is kind of off the cycle of we have to hold everything to June um, and talk once a year. They do events all the time, um, kind of when games are ready, honestly, right? And that's one thing that I think is happening more and more is that it used to be the industry would be on this kind of you know holiday cycle where they'd have all these big events in June and then go quiet for the rest of the year and ship games in the fall. Now games are always on Endeavors. I mean, there's, you know, Fortnite's constantly updating. They got their big event next Saturday, which I'm excited about. Um, and then uh, PlayStation, so I don't think they've been quiet. I mean, I would say generally there have just been fewer games coming out, um, partially because I think there are a lot of live service games that people keep playing. We keep playing the same games with our friends, but also just COVID's really impacted things. Um, and I think even this year, it's a lot lighter year than we thought when we started, right? It was an amazing February with Sifu and Horizon and Elden Ring um, and Destiny, Witch Queen. They were all within like two weeks of each other. 
And now there's like there has there's not really that much coming out right now. So it's gonna be very interesting to see kind of what the year looks like. I'm thinking about that for game of the year, obviously, for game awards and what the competition's gonna be there. Um, but I don't think anyone's necessarily quiet. I think people just have different strategies and approaches. Um, and I'm I'm very excited about what Sony's got to show first station uh, state of play on Thursday. Um, so we'll all watch that together. But good question. Um, all right, let's go to um, more questions here. Um, Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, what theaters are going to be streaming Summer Game Fest? Good question. Um, yeah, so uh, we're working with IMAX, and we're doing something called IMAX Live. So if you're a uh, in a, in one of the cities that IMAX has live capabilities, which is right now only really in the U.S. and Canada, you can go to tickets.imax.com, and you can go and watch the Summer Game Fest show live with your friends. You have to pay for it as a ticket. It's an IMAX screening, um, but you're going to get some goodies. There's a goodie bag that will reveal the contents of, I think, this week, but there's going to be some pretty cool stuff in there that I think will make it worth your while. Um, and yeah, it's in New York, LA, San Francisco, uh, Toronto, Canada, um, all around sort of the country. So if you're in one of those cities, go to ticket.imax.com and you could go check it out. And it's kind of an experiment. We're going to do it now, and we're also going to do it for the Game Awards in December. Uh, it It's a result of Something I did back in the day with PlayStation around E3, uh, where we did the sort of E3 experience, where fans could go to theaters and watch the E3 press conferences, and that was really fun to do. So I miss that, and especially now, kind of post-COVID, how can we gather physically? I was like, this could be a cool way to involve everyone um, in the show. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, next question uh, from Dark Legacy wants to know... Would you say that this year's Summer Game Fest will live up to the rumors and or expectations of fans? Dangerous question. Um, it kind of depends on what your expectations are, what the rumors are. There are lots of really bad rumors. I mean, it's funny. I have a pretty good sense of what's in my show, but also in other shows just because of, you know, we're all working with the same companies. And I see all these, like, leaked rundowns of shows. And it's all this stuff is, like, totally fake. Um, I see that with Game Awards, too. It's like, here's the 4chan leak of, you know, what's going to be at the Game Awards. I'm like, yeah, this was, like never even considered this game, or it wasn't like this was a version. It's like not at all real. So there's a lot of bad rumors out there about what's going on. Um, and I don't know. Expectations are a hard thing, right? Everyone has a different expectation of what they want to see. Um, I'm sure we'll disappoint some people. Hopefully we'll excite other people. I always say with a show like mine across a couple of hours, hopefully there are two or three things that you see in the show that you get excited about. And if we do our job right, you'll discover a couple games you want to put on your wish list, and hopefully that's worth your time watching the show. Um, if you are worried you're going to be disappointed, watch it on VOD afterwards or watch it online. Like, I mean, it's, you know, it's a free stream. You can watch it if you want. We're not forcing you to watch it. We're not uh, doing anything that uh, you don't have to do. So I don't know. Hopefully people will like some of the stuff we have to show, but I'm sure there will be things. I mean, I already see now there's stuff on the Internet where I'm like, this is not happening at all right now. Um, and, you know, I'm glad you, some people are excited about certain ideas of things, but um, it's not quite time for some of those things as well. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, it's, expectations are fine, especially in the June time frame because it's traditionally E3, so people are used to these kind of, like, big megaton announcements. Um, and it's a lighter year for releases um, as well in terms of what games are coming out. So, you know, I'll be there interested with the Xbox Bethesda show, what they have to show us um, when they announce that, you know, Starfield and Redfall are both moving to next year. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what they have to showcase. Same thing with PlayStation, uh, PlayStation State of Play, if I can talk. Um, they've said they're focusing on kind of third party and PSVR 2. And everyone wants to know, well, when are we going to get to see you know, a lot of their big first party games and things like that. So um, expectations are a funny thing. And you guys, I'm sure, will, will grade everything and give uh, opinions on stuff. Um, all right, next question comes from Double Matt underscore one. Double Matt Wants to know, which do you prefer more on the planning side, TGAs or Summer Game Fest? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, well, Game Awards is such a passion project of mine. I've been doing it for decades, really. Um, I really enjoy that process, and especially now that it's so well established. We get, I mean, the meetings I'm having already this year about the Game Awards are just like insane, the games that are going to be hopefully coming to that show. I say hopefully because even if I get pitched something now, it doesn't mean it'll necessarily happen in December. But I'm very excited about some of the things that are going to come together um, for later this year. Uh, Summer Game Fest, honestly, was it's been really stressful the past couple of years because there was always this kind of thing of like, is it 
is E3 happening or not? Is Summer Game Fest happening? So it's been a very frustrating thing, honestly, over the past couple of years because I can't just plan the show. I have to worry about, well, what other shows are happening and how does this fit together and what's going on? Um, but it's, I, I have a ton of fun doing these things. Like I'm so blessed and so honored to, to work with the gaming companies and put together these shows. So they're both fun. But yeah, so, uh, Game Awards is a little bit more fun or has been, but you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that's always gonna be the case. It's a lot more work also. I mean, Game Awards is uh, literally takes half my year to put together. And Summer Game Fest still takes a couple of months. I mean, we've been working on this since probably January, um, but they're different. Good question. Um, but yeah, they're just different. Um, let's see. All right. Um, next question. What is your personal most anticipated, most upcoming game? Um, the Creation Copilot. Uh, good question. I would say, whew, I'm actually, I'm really excited about the new Monkey Island game from Ron Gilbert. That was just a franchise that I loved uh, growing up. So I'm excited there's going to be another Monkey Island coming out. Um, I'm very excited about God of War, Ragnarok. I mean, I love the last God of War. I thought that was fantastic. Um, Starfield, I'm excited. I don't know anything about it. I hope we're going to learn more, uh, you know, June 12th around that. Um, but I'm very interested to see what Todd Howard is up to. Um, I had dinner with Todd in February and, and, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I think he's got something really special on his hands. So I'm excited to see what, what BGS will show for that. Um, I think other, I mean, obviously, you know, the Breath of the Wild sequel, I'm excited about. Um, we'll see if we see any more of that um, in the coming months, but I'm excited about that now that's moved to 2023. So those are probably some of the biggest ones right now. Um, and then there'll be some other surprises I'm sure that I'm excited about too. So um, stay tuned. But yeah, there's lots of good stuff. What's your most anticipated game? Drop it into the chat. Um, all right, next question. Um, Jeff, will you ever move the Game Awards to another city every year to make this more federated? Um, yeah, look, I've talked about that publicly before. I would love to do the Game Awards in a different city. Like, could you imagine the Game Awards live from Tokyo? Like, that would just be insane. It would be so cool. Um, I'd love to move it around sort of like the Olympics, right, where you kind of pick a new host city. Uh, then COVID got in the way, and it's also extremely expensive to do things internationally. So to go to, you know, London or Tokyo or other cities and stage our whole team and it's you know it's a very complicated show to put together technically um you know it's it's really difficult so we have to travel a lot of people and it's it's not a trivial thing to say hey you yeah, know yeah i'd love to do the show in tokyo or london which are probably the two first cities i would i would think about going to um so i don't know maybe one year uh definitely not this year we're back in los angeles this year and i think COVID slowed a lot of that down so in the future it is a dream of mine and i i think it would be so cool to do the show like from the Tokyo Dome or something and have all the Japanese developers there and fans and yeah, that would just like be nuts. So that's the kind of stuff that I get like very excited about personally, just thinking about one day making that happen. So not this year, but it's a great question. It's something I'm definitely, you know, thinking about. Um, Game Awards in Boise, Idaho, please. Not yet, but you never know. Um, oh, here's a good comment where someone says, it's just a bunch of advertisements. That's something that I... I often see people talk about um, for our shows that they're, you know, it's like, oh, it's a bunch of ads. Well, spoiler alert, if you tune into any, like the station, the PlayStation State of Play is an advertisement for PlayStation. The Xbox conference is an advertisement for Xbox. Um, and my shows are advertising games and getting you excited about them. Um, you know, that's, I think, sort of the, the contract we have with the audience that they kind of know that's what to expect. Um, that said, you know, I, I get that uh, there's an element of editorial to sort of how we do things and, 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 and what we place in these shows, and, and hopefully you guys find value out of the show. They are free shows that you get to watch, and, and my shows especially, we have to find sponsors and advertisers to pay for them um, because we're not, you know, if I was Xbox, I'm going to pay for the show because it's a marketing endeavor for my company. Um, so there's a line item for that. For me, I don't, I don't make games, so I have to sort of find sponsors to help us out. So yes, there are advertisements and sponsorships in all my shows. Um, we try and make them as relevant as possible. Hopefully there's some good games you get to see in there. Um, but yeah, like it's just like when you go to the movies, you, you know, you kind of go early, hopefully to see the movie trailers and like, I love movie trailers and I love game trailers. Um, so yes, you're going to see a lot of wall to wall game trailers in my shows. Um, and that's kind of how, how things are. Uh, we're going to have some cool gameplay sequences in this show, which we haven't done in Game Awards, which is going to be like literally raw gameplay. 
Um, that's something I love at E3 that we, we haven't been able to do at my other shows, especially at uh, Game Awards, just because things are so fast-paced. So maybe that's a little less advertising-y to you. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, there absolutely will be um, you know, sponsored elements to all my shows, and that's just sort of how we have to pay for them. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a fair point, and I see people always talk about that. But yes, we are absolutely kind of celebrating games and showcasing new games as part of... Um, part of my shows and that's not going to change so um it's a good commentary but it's just sort of uh you know it's kind of the way things are um here's another good question um am i feeling like i have to fill e3's shoes well yes and no um it's actually there's a little bit of trepidation because we're doing this in you know june which is a traditional e3 time period and i don't think i'm worried about comparisons to last year's e3 but I do think of, you know, 10 or 15 years ago how amazing E3 was for all of us. Um, and I think we'll be judged, I'm sure, compared to, you know, the best E3 that ever was. Um, and we're not trying to create an E3 replacement. What we're doing is different. I mean, I've been doing Summer Game Fest for a couple of years. And whether there's an E3 or not doesn't really matter to me. Um, we did just fine last year with, with E3 existing as well as a digital event. Uh, so, yeah, I do think about it. And I want to make sure that we're, we're doing, you know, doing right by the fans. Um, and I'm sure there will be people that are disappointed and like, oh, Summer Game Fest sucks, bring back E3. And, you know, it's just like the nature of the internet and what people have to say. Um, I would love the old E3s to be back. They're just not going to be back. And I talk to the game companies every day and I know what's going on and, and how they're thinking about things. And the reason we're doing Summer Game Fest is because I kind of knew that E3 probably wasn't going to happen this year. Um, and I wanted to make sure we had something. So that's why we created Summer Game Fest. And... Uh, Believe me, I think very deeply about this stuff. I'm very passionate about it. Um, I, I care very deeply about this. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly aware of the comparisons that'll be out there. And, uh, you know, we, I just, I like to show up every year and do a show and try and, and learn, learn about things and, and learn about the best way to do things. So we'll iterate off it and we'll, we'll keep going. Um, let's see. Um, is Sonic Frontiers going to be at the Game Awards? I don't know. Sonic Frontiers was at the Game Awards last year where we, we had a cool trailer for it. I don't know. This year, I guess, if it comes out... I think it's supposed to come out this year, right? I think it said Holiday 22 in the trailer last year. So conceivably, if it comes out by our cutoff, it could be at the Game Awards again as a nominee, I guess. Um, if you're asking about will be at Summer Game Fest, we're not talking yet about um, partners or games for Summer Game Fest, but we will be sharing more in the coming days. Even as soon as tomorrow, we'll start sharing details about things coming for Summer Game Fest. So um, stay tuned. Um, lots of great stuff to um, uh, talk about. Will I ever have a guy that says world premiere before every trailer? Uh, yeah, I don't know. They have that Xbox guy. I, did, I actually talked to that guy once because we did a funny thing with him with a world premiere. I think I actually have that on my soundboard. Did you like it? It still works. I, don't, I can't hear it, but maybe that's the world premiere guy. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no, I don't think we'll have that. Actually, we, we talk about that in our shows a lot. It's like, it shows world premiere so many times, you get desensitized to it. So, I don't know, maybe we should stop doing that. But yeah, I don't think we'll have a guy saying that. Um, let's see. Um, can we know the Summer Game Fest length? A rough estimate. Our show on Thursday, June the 9th, will probably be a little under two hours, I think. Um, you know, it's a live show, so kind of anything can happen, but I'd sort of plan your day around that. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, you know, it's hard to say, but I think we have a lot of stuff. We have like 30, 40 games we're going through. So there'll be lots of, uh, great stuff to share with you guys. Um, all right. Next question. Um, can we have some spoilers? Uh, no spoilers tonight, but hopefully you guys will tune in. Hopefully we'll have some good stuff for you. I do think it's going to be a good couple weeks. Uh, like there's definitely some good stuff coming that I'm very excited about it. Um, so, uh, so stay tuned. Um, and we will share more with you in due time. Um, here's a good question. Um, do I think Summer Game Fest could become a physical event in the future? Um, I do think it could become a physical in the future. This year, actually, we're doing something physical in Los Angeles with media and influencers, and Twitch will be a part of it, actually, um, to get to play some games. So uh, we haven't talked about it publicly in a big way because it's not open to the public. It's a smaller sort of test event, but there will be some hands-on playable stuff, and you'll see that actually covered on Twitch pretty extensively. So um, stay tuned for more news on that. Um, so we are adding some physical elements. I think Summer Game Fest will always be a digital first event, but there's the possibility that we would add some physical components to it in, uh, in future years. So 
Um, it's definitely something that we're sort of uh, thinking about, and um, I'm very excited to sort of um, you know do more about it in the future. So it's a great uh, it's a great question, and thank you for thinking about that. And hopefully, I would love you know even to do physical events in multiple. Um, cities that's something that i always think about too is like how could i do a physical event in london or in other cities um so it's definitely something that uh you know i think about a lot um all right um let's go to the next question here um let's see why is summer game fest only at one canadian theater you're talking about the imax thing uh it's because imax live is a brand new technology for imax to stream into theaters and not all their theaters are equipped with it yet i think they're only about 65 in the U.S., and I think it's like one in Canada or a couple in Canada and one in London. Um, so they're just starting to roll it out. So I would love it to be in more theaters, and they're going to add a lot more theaters. So by Game Awards time, um, I'm hoping that people will uh, be able to, you know, uh, see it in more theaters. So um, great question, and it's something that I'm definitely sort of, you know, thinking about um, there. Uh, next question is, what is your plan for building the VGA since it's now on the surface a top place to reveal content? Well, first of all, thank you very much. Um, uh, we're honored by the opportunity to reveal content at the show and partner with companies. Um, I don't want to talk too much about our plans yet for this year. Uh, we're still working on them, but we're really just going to keep kind of growing that show and like we'll have the orchestra back. We'll have hopefully good reveals. We'll hopefully have everyone together in person and fans back with us um, at the theater. So... Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very honored with what the show has become and how much it means to people. I've been inundated even this year with you know, teams pitching us games for reveals and whatnot. So um, it means a lot to me that people set, set that as a goal, right? Sometimes teams will say to me, it's like, we're going to work hard all year with the hope of being at the Game Awards in December. So um, it's, it's very meaningful to me, and I'm so proud that, that we have a vehicle like that. And hopefully we do right by the fans, but also the developers. Um, that want to reveal content there. So we got some good plans and we got to get through Summer Game Fest uh, first. But um, I'm very, very excited to talk more about it um, when, when the time is right. Um, all right, uh, next question here. Oh my God, there's so many questions here, guys. This is fun. It's good to be back talking about things. Um, I'm very excited. Hold on. Oh my God, there's so many questions. Uh, Sorry, I'm just flagging some here so I can answer them. You guys have, you guys have a lot of good questions tonight. Um, oh, my God. All right. Uh, sorry, I'm going to flag some more, and I'm going to go through rapid fire. Um, okay. Um, oh, is this working? There you go. Oh, Jeff Keeley, do you know why Nintendo didn't show up at the TGA last year and month? Um well, Nintendo was at the TGAs. Doug Bowser uh, accepted an award for uh, Metroid Dread. Um, Nintendo had some kind of uh, 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 trailers or spots in the show um, for kind of talking about their lineup for this year. We did not have a big Nintendo World premiere last year um, at the show. Uh, and sometimes it's just honestly how things shake out. Um, you know, you kind of look at like, since the Game Awards, how many big kind of Nintendo World premieres have they done? Um, they're you know, we're already at the end of May, and there haven't been a lot of um, big reveals from Nintendo. I think sometimes, they just, you know, they just don't have the software or the, the cadence of things ready to sort of reveal. Um, you know, obviously, I was hoping last year that we might get to do something on uh, the Breath of the Wild um, uh, sequel, but then, you know, ends up being, got delayed till 2023. Mr. Anuma said that, um, you know, a couple months ago that they delayed it. So that probably was part of the reason why we didn't have something at the Game Awards. So of course I would have loved to have done something. We ask all those questions. Um, but yeah, sometimes it just depends on the cadence of companies. The thing that I will say is that uh, COVID has had a huge impact on the gaming industry and has really affected development across the industry. Um, that's part of the reason I think this is a little bit of a lighter year this year for releases. Um, Cause you know, it, it's like you have to build these games and it, for the past two, two and a half years and people have been working from home, things are a lot slower. Um, so that may have had something to do with it. And yeah, I mean, it, it just, every year we're not always going to have, you know, something from everyone as part of the show. And last year we didn't have anything, um, you know, big as a Nintendo announcement. But we've also had, you know, the year before, we had Sephiroth um, as the big reveal that opened the show for Smash Brothers. So, um, you know, w we often have cool things from companies. It just kind of depends on the year and, and what's available. And, um, you know, we don't make the games. So as I always say to people, like, I can't, I can't guarantee something or I can't, you know, I can't know for sure what's going to happen. And sometimes we have things that, you know, we think are happening and don't happen. And it's just, it's, uh, 
it's always hard to say. So yeah, I, I appreciate the question. And of course, we, we love all the game companies and, and, and want them all to be a part of our shows. Um, but it just kind of depends on the, you know, what software is available and when. Um, all right. Uh, next question is, why haven't the partners been announced yet? I think you're asking about the game companies that are kind of in and involved in Summer Game Fest. That'll be coming out this week. Um, it's not really a function of, uh, there's no real delay. It's just, uh, I think we, like the first year of Summer Game Fest, we announced the partners the first day of uh, Summer Game Fest, which was May 1st, and sort of the same thing this year. We're just kind of announcing them this week. Um, you know, it creates a lot of speculation and conversation around what are people going to show, what are they doing. Um, but yeah, we'll announce it this week, and you guys will tear it apart and guess about things. We're announcing kind of some. There'll be some we'll add later. And uh, yeah, it's the whole idea of announcing partners is an interesting thing. Because like at the Game Awards, we don't really announce partners in advance of the show. But I guess for Summer Game Fest and these other summer events, people are kind of more keen to look at that stuff. So at one point, we even considered, like, should we even announce partners? Uh, what's the point of that? But yeah, we'll announce this week sort of some of the game companies participating in different ways around Summer Game Fest. And some of them will be in our live show. Some of them will be doing, um, you know, their own events kind of um, throughout June. And there'll be lots more to share. So, um, you know, stay tuned um, for more details on what's happening. Um, how many world premieres, uh, world primers? Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like uh, how many game announcements do we have versus updates on games? Uh, we have some brand new games that we're announcing for sure for the first time at um, uh, Summer Game Fest. We have lots of games where we're giving updates on games that have been announced, but people haven't seen um, details on those games yet or, or, or want to see more on them. Um, that's something that I think about last year where Elden Ring was our big reveal at the show. And a lot of people, you know, love that and say, how could you top that? And that wasn't even an announcement, really. It was just sort of the first gameplay trailer for Elden Ring, but it was a big moment. So, yeah, we've got a different show this year um, with lots of different stuff. Um, it's not necessarily, you know, all wall-to-wall -wall brand new games. I mean, lots of games are just going to bring meaningful updates to fans on what they have to share. So we'll share more in the next couple of days and the next week about some of the games, but it's a great question. Um ever thought about having additional hosts or co-hosts? I have. Um, and, you know, we've, we, we have Sydney uh, Goodman, who co-hosts uh, at the Game Awards and does the pre-show. Um, and Natasha Becker, who co-hosted with me for Gamescom last year. Uh, it really just depends on the show and what we're doing. Um, honestly, part of it is in COVID. I, I, when I started Summer Game Fest, I, the first year I did it from home, and I couldn't have a co-host, really. It was just sort of me. Um, so I would love to add sort of more folks into the mix um, around our shows, and it's something I definitely think about, especially for Game Awards. I think about who's going to hopefully take over one day for me for, for hosting for Game Awards. So, yeah, I, I love, and we have Kyle Bossman sometimes does our pre-show. He's always fun. Um, so, yeah, I, I would love to have more people that we could work with um, around the show and also just be, you know, more international and more diverse about sort of who's involved in our shows. So it's something we definitely think about, and I appreciate the, um, the question. Um, next question, it is too early in the day for people who work, Niner for Life 8. Um, so I, you're, I assume you're talking about the stream time of the show. Um, yeah, this show, Summer Game Fest, is at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, I get it's the middle of the day and the middle of the week. Um, it's always really hard to find the right time to stream these shows. Game Awards we do later at like 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon in Los Angeles. Um, but that's really late in Europe. And it sucks for European people that have to stay up until like 1 or 2 in the morning or 4 in the morning by the time the show's over. Um, so this one we do it a, a little earlier in the day. It's hard, right? I mean, State of Play is at like 3 p.m. Pacific on Thursday. And the Xbox event is at 10 a.m. on a Sunday. Um, there's no... There's no perfect time for any of these events. Um, so we just kind of pick a time. I try and be a little bit, you know, um, do this at a different time than Game Awards, just to allow a different audience to sort of be a part of it. Um, but yeah, it's very complicated. And there's no way to do sort of a perfect time for everyone in the world, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Um, how far in advance do I plan each Summer Game Fest? Well, we started planning Summer Game Fest... I guess late last year, but really started in January when I came back from vacation and the Game Awards and started planning it. So it's about about five months, I guess. And it's not necessarily 100% of my time, but it's been been a lot of work this year to sort of put together um, what, what, what we're doing for everybody. Um, let's see. Uh, how did you come up with the trophy design for the Game Awards? Well, that was made by Weta Workshop. Um, down in uh, New Zealand, and they worked with me in 2014 to come up with that design. It was a great honor to work with them. 
um, and build that trophy design. So yeah, Weta Workshop that did, you know, Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson's company uh, is the group that put that all together. And we were honored to collaborate with them to create that trophy, which yeah, is back there, right there behind me. So um, they're very, very, very cool. And I'm, I'm great, greatly honored that we got to work with them on that. Hello from Argentina. I need information to be a co-streamer, Jeff. You are an amazing person. Well, thank you for the, the kind words. If you want to be a co-streamer, you can co-stream the show. Um, you can go to our co-streamer sign-up, which is at, um, uh, it's a bit.ly link, bit.ly uh, forward slash uh, SGF22 co-stream is what you do, or you can look on my Twitter as well. I linked to it today. And you can sign up to be a co-streamer. You'll get the official badges and overlay, and you'll find out about the Twitch drop and everything. So, um, yeah, we'd love to have you be a co-streamer, and it's open to everyone around the world. Um, and we'd welcome you um, to co-stream the show, which would be great. Um, all right. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Um... Let's see, next questions. Um, okay, uh, sorry, I'm just gonna pull some more questions. Okay. Um, oh wow, you guys have lots of good questions. I'm gonna be here all night, it missed you guys. Hopefully you're excited for the show. Uh, we have lots of great stuff going on. All right, um, more questions. Featured chat. Here we go. The next round of questions. I've queued them all up, guys. Here we go. Um, Morbius question. You guys are hilarious with Morbius. So funny. Um, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Any thoughts on the consolidation in the industry? Well, um, it's an interesting time. That's for sure. There, I think there is consolidation. There will be more consolidation. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad. Um, the thing I will say is that I think the things I'm most excited about in this industry are a lot of the independent teams, the new teams. I'm proud that in, in Summer Game Fest we have, I'll get this wrong, but I want to say probably like three or four new teams that are showing their first projects at the show that are not even tied to necessarily one traditional big publisher. Um, and I think it's a really exciting time that even though there's consolidation at kind of the high end, um, a lot of the best games and coolest games are coming from independent developers and new teams that are getting funding from outside sources, um, and it's not about, you know, just EA, Ubisoft, Activision, um, you know, all those sort of big companies anymore. So even though there's like mergers and acquisitions like that, um, I think there's such an opportunity for other teams to stand out. So yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't worry as much about the consolidation because I feel like in some ways that some of those companies need to consolidate just because they have, you know, so many people and so much stuff um, that they do, but I think it creates opportunities actually for other developers to come through. And I'm conscious with my shows to have opportunities for smaller independent teams and others to be a part of them. So um, yeah, it's a good question. And, and believe me, I'm sure there's gonna be more consolidation. We will not be announcing any, you know, big acquisitions of companies at Summer Game Fest, I think, at least as of now. Um, let's see. Without giving anything away, do you feel there's at least one announcement that will or that you hope will blow people away? Uh, again, dangerous question. Uh, it, it sort of depends on like what kind of games you like. And I'm trying to think like, I don't know that, uh, you know, the bar is so high for like, what, you know, I'm curious like what the last game is that truly, what, what's the last announcement that truly blew you away? I'm curious. And a lot of people, Talk about Elden Ring last year like it was this huge surprise. And that game was announced. We just showed the first gameplay. So I never quite know what people are going to get, you know, really excited about. Um, I don't know that we have, you know, the insanity of, uh, you know, mic drop insanity that, you know, you would consider that. Um, we may have a couple things, but it's not like wall-to-wall -wall sort of mic drops or we're promising anything like that for Summer Game Fest. Um, and I think, you know... I think we're going to have some good shows from the first parties as well. We'll see what they have to share. So, um, you know, the surprise factor is always so difficult um, now to surprise people. I'm really proud of Game Awards. I think we do like, you know, get to surprise people once in a while with sort of cool stuff that we get to showcase there. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's always a difficult thing because the, the higher the bar we set, um, the more expectations it creates and then disappointment. So um, it's a good question, though. Um, Next question, does this year feel empty without a hyped game like Elden Ring? Well, it's something we thought a lot about if you're asking about Summer Game Fest. Um, you know, we never confirmed Elden Ring last year, but there was a lot of speculation about that being um, the big game. And 
Uh, look, it drove a lot of viewership and excitement. So yeah, as a producer, I definitely think about like, well, what's the replacement game that's going to kind of get people equally hyped? Um, I, I don't know if it's necessarily even possible, right? I mean, Elden Ring was, I mean, sold an incredible number of copies, right? I mean, sold more copies than Call of Duty last year um, and was just such a phenomenon. So I'm so honored that From worked with us on that game. Um, but yeah, I don't know that there's necessarily a replacement game that will ever match that. So it's more about how can you spread it out across multiple games and uh, you know, different things. So yeah, I mean, it's a, I guess it's a concern, but it's also, you know, we, we're not going to have an Elden Ring every year. So we have to sort of start thinking about like, well, what are the other games we're going to focus on? What can we do? Um, you know, the industry, I mean, I would love if there, I think everyone in the industry would love if there was an Elden Ring every two months coming out or, you know, an Elden Ring level game. Um, just not the case. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it, you have that trepidation and, and you really worry more than anything. It's just like, are you going to have enough games to show people? And then it just kind of works out every time normally. But, um, yeah, it's definitely something, you know, to think about. But it's not, it's not a reason to not do the show. You just have to sort of do the best you can with what you've got. I mean, same thing with Xbox. I'm sure when they started this year on their show, they're like, you know, Starfield and Redfall coming out this year. And then it's like, oh, those get delayed. And it's like, it's not like you don't do your show. You just have to sort of do the best you can and show what you can around it. So, um, yeah, we adapt. And, and things change on these shows every day. I mean, on Friday, when we had something that dropped out because the game is getting delayed and they're not ready to announce it. And, um, you know, things constantly shift on these shows. So, um, you know, in the next 10 days, anything could happen. Uh, but good questions. Um, will there be anything horror June 9th? I think we have some, yeah, I think we have horror, yeah, we have some horror stuff for sure. Um, probably a couple things that are kind of in the horror genre, I guess. Um, yeah, I was about that today of like the different genres and we try and, we try and kind of uh, time out the show in a way that, like, we don't have, you know, things back-to-back. -back. So it's like, oh, we have a space game. Then we should have a horror game. Then we should have, you know, a realistic game. And I don't know. So we, we think about that. Um, but, yeah, we try and represent, you know, many different genres inside of the show. And we're really proud um, that we try and, you know, have a really diverse group of things um, inside the show. Here's a big question from Alexi Cat. Hey, Jeff. How do you feel when a game that you promote comes out and it doesn't live up to the hype or we find out that it was completely misrepresented in the trailers? Does it affect your relationship with the companies that you work with? It's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, look, uh, Cyberpunk was a great example, I think, of a game that showed really well and then ultimately disappointed people when it came out, at least on, you know, on, on uh, console platforms. I think it, it PC got a better response. And yeah, it's always difficult because... We are, you know, promoting these games and, and we only get to see as much as you guys sometimes get to see, right? So it's not like I sit with a build of a game and play the whole thing and then decide, do I want to run a trailer for it? Often I don't get to see any more than you guys do. I mean, there are games in my show that I haven't even seen yet, the trailers, because they're so secretive and people are like not willing to show them to me yet. So, um, you know, I, I don't always necessarily get to see that much more than what you guys do with some, some of these folks. So, um yeah, but to your question about does it does it burn the relationship if if you hype a game and it, no, I think we all get disappointed, um, and you know I think sometimes games just don't turn out right, and you're really excited about the concept and the actual execution isn't as good as it could have been, um, but then other times you know like I think where where your question begins is like if someone really misled the public right about the quality of the game or what it was going to be. Um, and that's always a difficult thing. I think that's often happened with, you know, CG trailers where you sort of expect one thing and then when you ultimately see the game, it doesn't live up to the hype or something. So, yeah, it's, it's something we think about. Um, and I think, you know, I don't think it's necessarily burned our relations with people, but um, we're cautious about that and thinking about that much like you guys are. And, and I get, you know, I tell people, you see a game in our show, it's like you can decide to buy it or not buy it or wishlist it or not wishlist it. It's up to you. Um, and I get we have a platform and we do promote these games, so we have to be mindful of kind of what we're promoting. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's hard. I mean, making games is really, really difficult. And, uh, you know, it's not... It, sometimes people have the best intentions. Things just don't always um, pan out. Um, let's see. All right. Um, next question. Um is, have you ever felt that there are way more game analysis reveals than awards in the Game Awards, which probably should be the main focus instead of the reveals? Look, this is a very good question and something that is a popular topic of conversation around the show. Um, I would say a couple things on that. Uh, when we do kind of research with fans and even when I do Twitter polls, most people that watch the Game Awards tune in for the reveals. Um, if we were just a straight awards show, I don't think we'd have nearly the viewership that... Um, 
we would with the reveals. So the, the mass audience has told us pretty um, directly that they care about the reveals more than the awards. That being said, I really care about the awards, the industry cares about the awards, and clearly you do too. So we have to kind of find the right balance about how to do um, both things together. And the opportunity that we have is because we have these big reveals in the show, it means our awards are seen by tens of millions of people, which is really exciting um, that these games get discovered by so many people. I mean, I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of games that win awards at our show, and then they have a big sales spike because people go and play them afterwards. Um, so those things all factor into our thinking about how to balance that. You're right that it's difficult at the Game Awards to find that balance, whereas at something like Summer Game Fest, we're not giving out awards. We're literally just revealing games and showing trailers. So there's not that same tension. Um, but yeah, we we have to get it right, and we don't always get it right. Um, and I would just say to you, it's like we're never going to be able to do a pure award show we're also never going to just do reveals at the Game Awards. I mean, the title of the show is the Game Awards, so the game, you know, the game of the year will be our big reveal. It's the our, our, our big end of the show. We're conscious we don't do a lot of world premieres after Game of the Year because that really should be the ultimate moment in the show. Um, so yeah, it's something. It's a popular debate and discussion. I'm sure we'll go through it again this year. Uh, and we're never going to make everyone happy, right? It's one of those things like one year will be a little bit too far in one direction, another year too far in the other direction, and we just kind of have to find the right balance and that that healthy tension that sort of dialectic that exists between me and the team on that is, I think, what helps make our show as strong as it is. Um, has any publisher ever asked you to remove an announcement at the last minute? Um, yeah, there have definitely been things that have been removed. Um, and sometimes it's often just because the, the trailer's not ready and we have people that think they're going to be ready and they're just not ready. Um, I'm trying to think of great examples of that. But yeah, there are things that often get removed, sometimes even the day of the show. Um, there have been, I mean can't reveal a lot about it but yeah there have been things at game awards where it's like the day we'll have the, the trailer ready to go and then you know something won't happen or um things fall apart in a deal or whatnot and yeah the, you'd be surprised how many things change on these shows um in the days and weeks leading in i mean even this weekend there have been things moving around with with summer game fest so um yeah things definitely happen uh, behind the scenes that we, we don't tell tales out of school but things definitely do get shifted around um do I know everything or will I also be surprised at the event? Um, <laughs> I do know everything about my show, I think. Hopefully I'm not surprised in a bad way. Um, I don't know necessarily, though, everything that'll be at um, like the PlayStation State of Play or the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase, so hopefully I'm surprised. I tend to, you know know a lot about what's going on just because we're often working with, you know, some of the game same companies or there are things we were looking at for Summer Game Fest that ended up going to a different event. So, I, you know... It's kind of like a magician who is, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you see another magician do a trick and you kind of know how it's done. It's like there's a little bit of that um, with some of these other events where I kind of know things that are going to be in some of these events. But um, I don't know everything. And I, I love when I do get surprised. It's rare, but um, it's a lot of fun when I do get to be surprised by something. So, um, yeah, I hope I will get surprised because it's a fun feeling and it's I, I miss that, right? Um all right, um, I'm going to do a couple more questions, and unfortunately, i got to go because i got work to do. i got to work on my script um, for um, Summer Game Fest. But um, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to pull some more questions here. Um, oh, these are all good questions. Um, do, 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 do. Sorry, guys. I'm just pulling more questions from chat. Um, okay. More questions. These guys, these are good questions, guys. All right. Um, are there going to be more new announcements or more updates for games we know are coming? I would say more... Overall, more updates on games versus new announcements. We have new announcements for sure, but across the show, it's like it's probably veers a little bit more towards sort of existing games. And again, Elden Ring was an existing game last year that had a big update, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, Hi, Jeff. Why did Joseph Ferris get so little time in an acceptance speech for Game of the Year? Um, he didn't have so, so little time. I think we were... The show was running long last year, um, and so we were trying to get people to be a little bit tighter. Uh, we would never cut off. We never cut off anyone at the Game Awards, really, for their speeches. So I think he was just trying. I think he was honestly so shocked 
uh, he didn't know what to say. Um, but yeah, we would have allowed Joseph to go on more if he, he wanted to, and uh, we love him, and you know, it's awesome that he won for Game of the Year. So um, yeah, it's hard to know how long speeches should be. I think, again, the show is running long, so I think we were encouraging people to be short, but um, he could take all the time he wants to to, um, to, to give his speech. Um, hi, Jeff. Do you think Starfield will be shown at length in BGS fashion at the Xbox show now that it's delayed? You know, I don't know. Um, I remember when Todd did the... I think it was the Fallout 4 demo, um, and that was legendary. He did the Dolby Theater, and that was like a 20, 30-minute demo. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, and I don't know, you know, being delayed, what that means. Um, I don't know anything, so I'm just speculating. But I would think it would still be there in some form just because, you know, Xbox does this big June event, and um, they said first half of next year for Starfield and, and Redfall – so conceivably that, you know, there wouldn't be another one of these before then. So um, I hope they'll show something. Yeah, I don't know if it means we'll just get a trailer. I think, again, there's just speculation, but last year they showed the trailer to open the show. I, I think they would have to come back with more than just a trailer again for Starfield. But I don't know. You know, it's, it's really hard to um, do these events. And you remember last year with Halo, right? Everyone wanted to see more on Halo, and they just showed a trailer because they were really busy finishing up the game and working hard on it. So... Um, it's hard right now for dev teams to kind of put together demos and extended stuff when they also have the game to finish. So I really don't know. Um, I think I, I would hope we get something on Starfield. Hopefully we get something a little bit more in depth on it. Um, but I don't really know. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to say. And yeah, the fact that it's not coming this November probably means you might get a little bit less of it. But I don't know. Maybe they're just going to do exactly what they were going to do. And it's so hard to know because, you know, what does that delay really mean? And people say it's delayed, but they don't give a ton of context, right? So it's really hard to answer that question. But I'm very excited to see more of it. I have not seen a lick more of Starfield than what you guys have. So I'm very, very excited um, to check it out. Um, next question. The most important thing is the awards, of course, but the announcements reveals are what makes the TGAs better than the Oscars. Okay, comment. Um, thank you. Yeah, that's why, I mean, a lot of people feel that way, um, that they like the announcements and we have to kind of strike the right balance. Um, Let's see. Um, this was probably asked before, but do you think the big reveal for SGF will have similar hype to Elden Ring last year or different? It'll be different. Um, again, there's no, there's no kind of proxy for Elden Ring. That was such a unique, special game, um, and a unique situation that it's, it's hard to think anything will sort of top that, um, and I wouldn't want to sit here and say that. Um, it'll just be a different show, and, and we'll have different games in it, and doesn't mean you know we, we didn't want to do the show. We, of course, wanted to do it and do it in a different way. Um, but yeah, it's a great question. It's something we certainly think about. Um, let's see. How's the dynamic between devs wanting their trailer on the show and the show wanting big reveals to draw viewers? Um, well, it's kind of like it's, it's, it's a balance, right, of sort of how much stuff is marketing versus how much is editorial. We definitely take, you know, a lot of editorial content in our shows of basically what you call kind of earned placement in the industry where it's kind of something has so much editorial value that you're really excited about that you want to sort of put it in the show. Um, then there are other people that are more sort of sponsored um, partners and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a, uh, it's a dynamic, right? And it's a balance and trying to figure out the right way to sort of fit everything together. And we don't always get it right. Um, that's something that, you know, we think about. It's like, how do we make this like, you know, how do we make this a good show for you? Uh, also based on the available content and who's interested in doing things. That's the other thing is like, of course, they're games we'd love to work with and they're not ready or they don't have stuff. Um, so, you know, every year's different. I've been doing these things for, for many decades now. Um, so I've seen it all, and uh, every year is different, and there's always a twist and turn. So um, we think about it, and uh, every choice is deliberate, and we have reasoning behind why we do what we do. Um, but, you know, to your point, it's, uh, it's a challenge. And we also try, and I, I really do think about, like, the smaller teams and including them in the show when they don't have, you know, the budgets or the, the kind of awareness. I love picking smaller games that we can also highlight, and we do the Day of the Devs stream immediately after the kickoff show, which I really would uh, encourage you guys to watch, which are tons of amazing independent games. So yeah, we think about that and we try and strike the right balance, but I think it's a really good, uh, it's a good question. Um, what's my favorite moment of the Game Awards last year? Um, I'm trying to think back to last year in the Game Awards. Uh, what was my favorite moment? Um... Well, Joseph winning Game of the Year was pretty cool. Um, you know, it was f fun to see that, and I would never expected that that game was going to win Game of the Year, but there we go. It was a ton, and well-deserved, but it was, a, it was a fun moment. So that was kind of cool to see Joseph win that. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, 
you know, I love the orchestra every year. Lauren Balfour, what he does, I think that's always amazing with the Game of the Year montage, and that's really fun. So, yeah, it was kind of a... It's it's hard to remember back. I mean, that was five, six months ago, and it's uh, we're already so so deep into this year's Game Awards, it's hard to remember last year's. But, yeah, I think Joseph winning Game of the Year was pretty fun, um, which was really good. Um, all right, guys. Well, that was tons of fun. Um, wish I could stay longer, but I got to get, um, get rolling, get ready for Summer Game Fest. But this has been fun. I'm glad we got to hang out and chat a little bit and talk about um, the show. Uh, I'll try and stop back again as we get ready, but the big thing to note is that watch the PlayStation State of Play this Thursday uh, at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and then we'll have uh, Summer Game Fest next Thursday at uh, June 9th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. GMT. Hope you guys get to uh, tune in. We'll hopefully deliver a good show for you. It'll be live right here on Twitch. Get ready to co-stream, and stay tuned to my Twitter uh, at Jeff Keeley, I'll be giving you lots of updates. Even as early as tomorrow, we'll start sharing details on things coming to the show. So um, get ready. And thank you so much for all your support and watching my stuff. I really appreciate it. And we will see you guys again soon. I miss being on Twitch. So hopefully I'll be back again soon. We'll do some more streams as we get ready for um, the showcase. Have a good night, guys. Take care. We'll see you again soon.